Greetings and welcome everyone to the Great North Pagan Podcast. This is Thomas Landlord Putton, and I hope there everyone having a happy Easter, but more importantly, a happy old star from not too long ago. Mm-hmm. I hope you're doing well, Erin. I am doing fabulous, Thomas. Thank you. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. Well, Ezra mentioned that, you know, for some of you are celebrating Easter, but of course for a lot of us pagans, we know of the holiday of, or Sabbath of Ostara, which was Latin name for the Anglo-Saxon goddess of spring. Um, it is one of the lesser Wiccan Sabbaths, usually celebrated with the vernal or spring equinox right around March 21st, although because of its origins may be celebrated on a fixed date of March the 25th. Estor brought the, the dawn each day as well as the dawn of the year when the earth woke up from winter sleep. As spring which reaches its midpoint, night and day stand in perfect balance, with light on the increase. This time belongs to the maiden and her parallel in the sun young sun god, who now cere- cere- celebrates a sacred marriage with the young maiden goddess, who conceives. In nine months, she will get, again become the great mother. It is a time of great fertility, new growth, and newborn animals. Other names of the Sabbath have been known are Ostara, Estor's Day, Rite of Estor, Albin Esir, Festival of the Trees, and Lady Day. The Christian holiday of Easter is very near to the same name. Notice the similarity of the name, you know, Easter, Star, and that sort of thing. And it's determined as the first Sunday after the fu- first full moon after the vernal equinox. Ostara well, has been sacred from many of the earliest times. It's associated with the goddess Esther, Rosmeta, Gaia, Aphrodite, Demeter, and Persephone, the snake goddess, and many others. It's a time of reawakening for the green man and the corn mother in, per- in previous harvests. Both emerge to make the new promise of a bountiful harvest in the coming seasons. Persephone arises from the underworld, and Demeter fills the land with abundance of her joy at her daughter's return. Now, if you don't know that, that's the story um, in Greek mythology when Hades had had abducted Persephone to the underworld, and during that time Demeter was feel, feeling depressed, and that's how the winter came to be. Ostara teaches us to transform the energy gained through the rest into renewed life force, new creations, and new visions. You can also consider Ostara as a time of balance between light and dark. Night and day equally divide the 24 hours. Now, the dark half of the year gives way into the light. You can perform rituals to ask for balance in your life and to honor both dark and light. You can also work with Ostara as the first quarter of the sun year, parallel to the first quarter of the moon. It's time to start new things or to consolidate beginnings. If the first inspiration began at Imbolc, now it is the time to pour all nutrients and growth. You can also plant new seeds now. Symbolic associations for Ostara include the element of air, the direction of east, and the time of dawn. Our ancestors commanded this day when light and dark stands the balance, 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night, before days begin to lengthen the summer light dominates the dark. For them, it is marked growing strength of the young spirit of vegetarian, vegetation, who emerged from a cave at a tomb where it spent the winter. Now, this should sound familiar. This is maybe theoretically speaking why the early Christians chose Easter to mark the period of when when the resurrected Christ emerged from the tomb, the Christian evolution of Ostara, the day of which is determined by the first full moon following the equinox. The three days Jesus spent to the tomb or underworld echo the three days of the dark new moon of winter, when all life sleeps. The Christian festival of Easter always occurs on the first Sunday after the full moon following the spring equinox, betraying its pagan origins. Christians have even adopted the pagan name of the festival Estor, or Easter. Most of the customs traditionally associated with the Easter feast are also pagan in origin. So you kind of can see the connection to there. Now a common thing also with Easter is, of course, the Easter Bunny. Now one tale is that the rabbit so loved his goddess Estor that he laid sacred eggs in her honor, then brightly colored them to give them to her as, as gifts. Esther was so delighted, she wanted this joy to be shared by all, so thus the tradition continued. The second tale tells how Esther found the wounded bird in the snow. To help the little bird survive the winter, she transformed it into a rabbit, 
but the transformation was incomplete and the rabbit retained the ability to lay eggs. And thanks for its life being saved, the rabbit took the eggs and decorated them as gifts to Estuar. Again, she was delighted as she wanted to share her joy, so the tradition continued. The Saxons believed that the goddess Estor, in the form of a hare, traveled about the land, renewing the fertility of the earth and its creatures. The modern belief that the eggs are delivered by a rabbit known as the Easter Bunny comes from the legend of the goddess Ustar. It is said that so many did, so much did a lowly rabbit want to please the goddess that he laid the sacred eggs in her honor, greatly decorated and humbly presented them to her, so pleased that she, wa- she wished all humankind to share in the joy. In honor of her wishes, the rabbit went through the entire world and distributed these little decorated gifts of life. The entire community would gather for games, feasting religious rituals while showing off their clothing. It's a time of increased births and, and important to Estar, the Saxon lunar goddess of fertility, from where the, we get the word estrogen, whose two symbols were the egg and the rabbit. The lamb is also another symbol of Estara, as it is sacred to the virgin goddess of Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. The sun enters the sign of Aries and the, at the equinox. In one solar myth, the sun is rescued from the underworld dragon and resurrected as the golden ram, Aries Chrysolomon, at the spring equinox. Jason and his Argonaut crew journeyed to recover the sacred, sacred golden ram's fleece, and the stolen fleece was transported to the stars in his honor. Sheep are said to bow three times to the east to welcome the rising sun. Even in Christian times, lamb was considered an essential part of Easter. All over Britain, there was a suspension that the sun was dense as it rose the Easter's morning, and a lamb with a flag appeared in the face of the sun. Early Christians often climbed a nearby mountain or hill at the dawn of Equinox, reenacting a pagan custom, to watch the dancing sun, which signified Christ's resurrection to Christians. Buns marked with a cross, representing the four directions of the four faces of the moon, was a tradition f- food at pagan observances, observances at the spring equinox. Christians adopted this practice, and even today the custom is for, for everyone to eat a hot cross bun on Good Friday in Britain. These cakes, made eaten once a year, were once considered to be very powerful. A careful housewife would save a portion, which she tied in a bag and hung from the kitchen rafters. When any man or beast of the household became ill, a few of the crumbs would be added to any remedy given to them to increase its effectiveness. Now there's a common saying also that happens for many of us our rituals. This is, May the Lord and Lady bless you with all fertility, abundance, success, and all things new. A star marks the beginning of true astronomical spring, when snow and ice make way for green. Celebrating the start of the solar signal that spring is returning to the Norman he- northern hemisphere. A fire or fertility festival celebrating the return of the sun, the god, and the fertility of the earth, the goddess. At Ostara, the god glo- grows to maturity while the goddess wakes from her sleep. Yellow flowers are dyed with yellow eggs. Cinnamon cake and saffron loaf lo- symbolizes the growing strength of the sun. Decora- decorating the colored egg symbolizes fertility, sacred life, and to honor Gaia, the Mother Earth, using eggs in bread honors both the sun god and Demeter, the goddess of grain. Ancient Egyptians and Romans gave each other presents of eggs at the spring equinox as a symbol of the resurrection of the sun. Later, Christians adopted the egg as a symbol of the resurrection of Christ. During the Middle Ages in Britain, a common belief held that giving children red-dyed eggs at Easter as the symbol of Christ's blood would keep them healthy for the coming year. Eggs blessed by a priest are commonly holy gifts. After the Reformation, there was a decline of such customs. Now, now in case you went through this and kind of were not so sure on a couple of things, here's what the vernal equinox is. This is a time of balance when the day and night equal, as we mentioned, 12 hours a day, 12 hours a night, was traditionally a day to celebrate both Earth and Sun. Our ancestors honored the balance of all things, male and female, spiritually and physical, etc. The virginal equinox marks the return of the goddess after her win- winter hibernation, and this time we think of renewing ourselves. We renew our thoughts, our dreams, our aspirations. We think of renewing our relationships. 
This is an excellent time of year to begin anything new or to completely revitalize something. This is also an excellent month for prosperity rituals or rituals that have anything to do with the growth. I mean, I think any of us can recollect when winter is, winter is like, it's cold out, the tide, it's all snow about, we're stuck inside, but then the second it gets warm and the snow melts, you can't help but feel revitalized in a sense. Spring cleaning. Spring cleaning, good example. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Clean out the old, bring in the new. Exactly. And then the common thing was the element of fire, representing the light of intelligence and the courage to follow it. Helps destroy the old and go on with the new. And then, like was mentioned about the goddess Gaia, is the earth and pr- protect us of all life. Her special magic is related to the cycles, seasons, plants, and healing. May also be called on new life rituals. You call on Ga- Gaia for rituals to heal the environment. Best to call her while she's sitting on the ground out- outdoors. The candles used for invoking Gaia should be blue, green, or brown. Let the air be the incense of Gaia. Now, here's some interesting ways also here, before we go into our first break, to celebrate Ostara. One simple way is go out in nature. Take a walk around your neighborhood or your favorite park. See which plants are sprouting, which budding, which blooming, which still are in the grips of winter. Feel the air, smell the seeds of Ostara. That's the common thing that's in March. A lot of the trees, you'll just see those little bl- blossoms and blooms that come out. And especially after the snow has melted, and if you study the, the grass enough, you'll just start seeing those, those blades of grass starting to shoot out of the ground. Clear a space for a garden, or start flowers, herbs, or vegetables indoors. It's too early in this climate to plant fruits and vegetables. Frost can happen as late as April in the Northwest. We all can live late in North Dakota, especially. But you can clear weeds, grass, and rubbish from the spot where you plan to garden, or you can start seeds indoors. Check your favorite garden store for flowers and vegetables might be best to be started now. Pick up litter litter at your favorite park or bench. Help the earth rejuvenate by getting rid of the mess. Even an hour cleanup can make a big difference. I mean, this is something I really can relate from. Me and my friends went out once uh, to our local park here in Castleton. And did a cleanup of the trash. Ritually color color hard boiled or brown eggs. Eggs are a potent symbol of fertility, figured in pagan spring worship long before their appropriation by the Christian Easter. Ukrainian piscani brown eggs with patterns drawn in wax and dyed are pagan amulets for fertility, prosperity, and protection. Pisaki is has come to us be basically unchanged in its form from the hunter gatherers of Eastern Europe. For your own rituals, you can draw in crayon or white wax on hard boiled eggs symbols that represent things you want in the coming year, sun year, or write on the eggs these things names or both. Then you can then use Easter egg or natural dyes to color the eggs. Your wax symbols and writing will stand out against the dye color. Next, raise energy in ritual for your goals, charge the eggs eggs with that energy, and then peel and eat the eggs, taking in the things you want to manifest. Alternatively, you can mark and dye unboiled eggs, then crack the tiny holes in both eggs with a pen, and blow out the matter matter inside, keeping the eggshell on your altar. Then you can meditate on the imaginary, imaginary of the seed. Consider a seed and how it relates to the earth, how it falls from the mother plant into rich loam and made the breakdown of other dead plants. Consider how the seed is influenced by sun and rain, by the energy and from sky and earth, or contemplate as a seed is an idea of a situation of your life. Then imagine the seed breaking open, sending its roots into the sprouts. Study what the, those roots and sprouts look like where they find the barriers where they grow almost strongly. Perform magic by planting a seed to grow your spell. A traditional love spell runs as follows. Of course, you shouldn't perform the spell to draw a particular person, but rather to draw the right person toward you. Just after the noon moon, plant a seed of some sturdy plant in the pot. Water thoroughly and then charge your spell by raising energy and saying over the plant, as this root grows, this blossom blows. May my true love be inclined toward me. You can adopt this spell to any purpose naturally achieved over time. 
such as success of a business. You can also perform magic to give back to the earth. Rays and send energy return to the earth, our mother, some of the most bounteous energy and fertility she gives to us. Especially in the, this time of day when the world is still kind of, I wouldn't say hectic, but at least topsy-turvy. I mean, that's... The, unbalanced. Unbalanced is, yeah, thank you. And unbalanced would be a proper term. I think she could use a little pick-me-up. Mm-hmm. Meditate on the moon hair. Rabbits provide an ob- obvious symbol of animal fun- fis- fisudity. Meditate on, the, meditate on the moon hair. The animal that the ger- early German tribes and the Aztecs saw on the face of the moon and see what comes to you about literal or creative fertility in your own life. Then you can honor the spring or earth goddess or god of your choice or a god or goddess of your balance. To honor balance, venerate Roman Janus or, or female counterpart Jana or any pair of twin gods and goddesses. You can honor go- goddesses and gods of spring and fertility now. Great Ostera with rites like those of Aphrodite. Drink new wine in honor of Dionysus. Celebrate warlike Mars, deep and fertile Heritha or young Induna. Likewise, you can honor the maiden, either soul and free of ripe for consumption. Light around your house pillars with white and black candles symbolized in the dark light. Each time you pass a pair of these, these candles, white, the white and black, you can honor the balance of light and dark we find this time of year, and the balance of light and dark within yourself. Light a bonfire that darned the equinox to honor this light of the year. Not only did the each and nor- northern Europeans burn such fires, but also the Mayans. I mean, that's something we also do here. I mean, in the, the backyard of the studio, we also have a fire pit. Meditate or perform ritual of the dawn of sunset. These liminal times are particularly significant now when we balance between dark and light. And finally, meditate or perform ritual for balance in your life and the Earth's life. Meditate on that ancient Eastern emblem of balance, the yang yang symbol. Consider what is dark and hidden, rightly and wrongly, in your life and what is day lit. Consider how you can best create balance, honoring both sides of yourself. Likewise, contemplate what you see as dark and light in the world around you. Meditate upon what this year will bring, dark and light, and how best you can take the right action in the world. You can also use the symbols actively, raising energy and asking in balance that comes into your life. So those are good ways to celebrate Osar beyond just, you know, your Sabbath ritual. So we're going to take a little break and you're going to listen to some music and we'll come back and we'll talk about the traditions with further about the, about the, the Osar eggs. Mm-hmm. So we'll be back in just a moment. Stars who are your company dance with you Teach us the mystery of your dance We may be in harmony with you Learn to give away and renew Oh moon mother, your loving gifts fall so sacred mountains Oh moon mother your shining gears fall softly on the sacred oceans Sacred plants dance in the light of the night Dancing in harmony with you Ocean waves dance Oh, 
sacred oceans Hold my warmer the light of night Stars who are your company dance with you Teach us the mystery of your dance We may be in harmony with you Learn to give away and renew Learn to give away and renew And we are back. I hope you liked that little portion there. So now we're going to continue on here. Erin's got us some further information of the history of Ostara. Um, we're going to talk about eggs. Hmm. Um, from the Llewellyn Journal, The Magic of Easter Eggs by Janina Renee. Throughout the world, Easter eggs have been used as potent charms and for attracting luck and warding off troubles. Easter eggs are also among the most charming and meaningful pagan symbols. Named as they are for the goddess uh, Ostre, or, um, or Ostara, who presides over the eastern quarter, the dawn, and the resurgence of life in spring. Follow, um, and here we have further following are some thoughts on how we can take greater pleasure in the seasonal tradition of decorating eggs. Um, offering an egg to Ostara. Set out a decorated egg or hang a miniature egg charm in the eastern quarter of your house or garden or altar display to honor the goddess. You might especially want to offer her a red or yellow colored egg on spring equinox and or Easter while invoking goddess of light, goddess of life, may your life and light suffuse my being. Also, anytime you like, you could stand facing the east and reflect on how every dawn is like Easter. You could do this while consuming an egg. <laughs> uh, exchanging eggs. The exchange of decorated eggs is a folk practice of great significance in both Western and Eastern Europe. Though customs vary by religion, adults present colored eggs to children as an act of child blessing. Child present eggs to adults, such as teachers and godparents, to show respect. Young men and women exchange eggs as tokens of love, and in general, people present eggs to friends, neighbors, acquaintances, clients, and service persons as a seasonal gesture of goodwill. Egg-giving customs are not limited to Europe either. For people in the old Persian culture area give red eggs at Norus spring equinox their new year, and the Chinese hand out red-colored eggs for luck on special occasions such as weddings. Amer um, such as weddings. Americans, however don't have such uh, much of an egg-giving tradition as our Easter egg customs are limited to hiding them for children, as well as occasional egg-rolling contests. However, if we can understand the symbolism of the egg, we can rediscover the pleasure in some of those of these old traditions. When you hand a person an egg, you are blessing him or her. Desi because aside from being highly nutritious, the egg is a symbol of new life, and beyond that, it is a world symbol. Uh, sharing an egg by um, sharing an egg by cutting up and dividing some healthy ta some healthy tasty snacks such as apple an orange or an egg and sharing it with your loved ones is a convenial form of communion in countries where the Easter eggs are often taken to church to be blessed by the priest in a special service or where they have other ceremonial significance it is often a custom for the first egg to be divided among family members if you want to do this for your family or group of friends, you can bless an egg by clasping it in your hands and slowly breathing in and out as you visualize each breath drawing vital energy from the universe through your body and into the egg. Then say a little blessing such as, as we partake of this egg, may we fully enjoy the health and wholeness that Ostara offers us. As much of as most of us eat our eggs with salt, which is a symbol of in corruptibility, sprinkling on the salt can also be done with a ceremonial flourish. An Easter basket for mom. If you have uh, childhood memories of gaily decorating Easter baskets overwhelming, overflowing with colorful eggs and other goodies, it is likely that your mother arranged much of that while thinking about how to delight you with these symbols of springtime joy and celebration. Because of, because the Easter basket is named for Ostara, we can see that it has some other motherly associations beyond those pointed out by, by Carl Jung. 
for whom the basket symbolized the mother's body. As, uh, as mother goddesses, such as the Germano-Celtic Meltrone, um, were often portrayed with baskets overflowing with fruit or grain, we can all better appreciate the basket as a symbol of the ma maternal quality of giving, which also makes it an appropriate vessel for giving back. Whenever you present your mother with a basket of flowers or good things, you are effectively blessed with performing a blessing, wishing your mother abundance as well as bodily vitality. Indeed, the gift of a basket is also a spell for healing. With these benefits in mind, you can take advantage of the returning springtime to put together a basket of Easter surprises for your mother, just as she once did for you. Be sure to include an egg to symbolize your thankfulness for the gift of life. If your mother has certain dietary restrictions, she probably won't mind the inclusion of a lovely crystal or gemstone egg as a magical keepsake. Um, Easter eggs make delightful offerings to nature spirits and other spirits of place, so it is no surprise that cultures around the world have egg offering traditions. For example, people in Oberberg, Germany, used to set an egg out beside a stream on May Day for the woodland elves. Moroccans would offer eggs to appease the genie so they would not trouble children or other sensitive persons, and the Jamaican Maroons would pre present eggs to special trees that house the spirits of the dead. While in the past such offerings have sometimes been made in fear, modern pagans like to leave offerings in the spirit of a shared celebration of life. If you wish to make an offering of an egg, you could lay it in lay it in some secluded corner of your yard or local park if you live in an apartment, while wishing that all beings may thrive and thinking about how the world of nature and the world of spirit are in, interpenetrating and intensively alive. An added benefit of honoring your community of spirits is that a bond can develop between your family pets and the spirits of a place as pets have so much in common with domestic spirits and their sense of territor territoriality and attachment to place. Consider offering decorated eggs to the spirits of your home and garden on behalf of your pets, both living and dead. You could set out an egg for each pet, perhaps red eggs for living pets and green eggs on the graves of pets buried in your yard. When the spirit communi community attached to your own local Take, locale takes uh, an interest in your pets, they'll be more protective of them. They can also help ease the transition for the spirits of pets when they pass on. In Eastern European countries where the Easter egg is such an important cultural tradition, people place decorated eggs on the graves of loved ones. The symbolism is appropriate because an egg can have a stone-like or tomb-like appearance, so it is also a symbol of life emerging from the tomb. Because our loved ones are with us in spirit and psychics say that we are always surrounded by other spirits who work for our well-being, why not offer them an egg in the form of psychic energy? Just visualize yourself breathing in energy from the universe through your body and out through your hands, then shape the energy into an egg-like form with your hands while also imprinting it with your wish for the happiness of all beings in spirit. If you have a basket or other container or surface before you, you can strengthen your powers of visualization by imagining yourself laying the egg in the basket and then practice visualizing yourself taking the egg out and putting it back. If you are especially good visualizer, you can imagine something like a Fabergé egg, energy egg with, excuse me, with a symbolic surprise inside, such as a crystal chick or a daffodil of light. When you have visualized enough, place your energy egg in the basket and say something to the effects of, This is my Easter offering for my friends in spirit. May this concentrated energy expand to benefit one and all. In Latin and Mediterranean and South American countries, when a person is suffering from intrusive or disruptive energies, healers rub his or her body from head to toe with an egg, with the idea that the egg draws off the negative energy. As a general technique for infusing positive energies, some New Age therapists rub crystal eggs over the body to invigorate the aura. In view of these practices, an egg dyed in some natural coloring, such as an herb or spice that has beneficial qualities, could be used in some of these healing uh, model teas. For example, turmeric, which has many beneficial qualities, can be used to dye Easter 
eggs and it is rubbed over both Hindu and Muslim brides and babies in India because it imparts an auspicious golden glow. In cases of soul loss, Thai healers have charmed wandering soul fragments into an egg to be eaten by the patient as a way of reabsorbing his or her scattered energies. If you're ever experiencing feelings of disorientation or fragmentation, you could be experiencing a form of soul loss. To perform a little self healing from traumatic incidents have um, have left you feeling a bit beside yourself you could decorate an egg with your name your birth date your symbol and other astrological symbols that are special to you when uh, then ceremony ceremonially eat the egg with the idea that you're pulling some of your own energies back into your body this would also be a nice treat for a child who has had a bad day at school, or met any of the other member, number of upsets that children are sensitive to. Plastic Easter eggs make good glamour bombs, which are enchanted ideas you leave out in public places to give up unsuspecting people a moment of delight. Fill them with a hopeful message, a la fortune cookies, or other pleasant things. Um, many collectors appreciate eggs as decorative objects or keepsakes. In addition to the exquisite um, Pisanki, for which some Slavic countries are famous and other natural eggs, such as ostrich shells decorated by African craftspeople, are art eggs manufactured of wood, gemstone, glass, and porcelain. Some companies, such as Lennox, Lardo, Ladro, and Gobels, have even issued collectible eggs for different years through perhaps the best-known commemorative eggs, are those issued each year by the White House in time for the annual egg roll on the lawn. These wooden eggs are designed by the first family. For example, the egg for 2010 featured a jogger bunny for Michelle Obama's campaign against childhood obesity, while 2011 features a detailed hand-painted image of the White House. This suggests opportunities for new age artists and artisans to design eggs for the more magically minded. Such eggs would feature pentagrams, sun goddess, and green man images, hairs entwined in Celtic interlace, and other magically meaningful designs. I have here the legend of Ukrainian eggs. The Hutzels Ukrainians who live in the Carpathian Mountains of western Ukraine believe that the fate of the world depends upon the Sanka. As long as the egg decorating custom continues, the world will exist. If for any reason this custom is abandoned, evil in the shape of a horrible serpent who is forever chained to a cliff will overrun the world. Each year the serpent sends out his minions to see how many Sanki have been created. If the number is low, the serpent's chains are loosened and he is free to wander the earth causing havoc and destruction. If, on the other hand, the number of Pisanki have increased, the chains are tightened and good triumphs over evil for yet another year. The art of the decorated egg in Ukraine, or the Pisanki, probably dates back to ancient times. No actual ancient example exists as eggshells are fragile. As in many ancient cultures, Ukra Ukrainians worshipped the sun god, Desbo? Des uh, sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, the sun was important, it warmed the earth, and thus was a source of all life. Eggs decorated with, an, with nature symbols became an integral part of spring rituals serving as benevolent talismans. So. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Alright, so Ostara egg symbolism. There are many fine books that describe the symbolism on Ukrainian Pisanki, not to mention the rich symbolism within Wiccan and other pagan traditions. Um, I have here some traditional symbols used on Ukrainian eggs, and you um, may notice that many of these symbols have universal meanings throughout the world. Circles, um, protection, everlasting life, continuity, and completeness, the sun, and cycles of life. Uh, triangles, the elements of air, fire, and water, or just fire, the trinity, sun, moon, and stars. Um, suns, or le uh, life-giving, all-embracing nature of God, especially as the sun is seen as the God. Fire and warmth, enchantment, prosperity, good fortune. 
It is the most ancient and significant symbol appearing on almost every Ukrainian egg from a small circle or dot to an elaborate many-rayed affair. Uh, tripods, man, woman, and child, birth, life, and death. Stars and roses, um, meaning popular symbols for purity, life, giver of light, the eye of God, the God's love for, in, for, for humanity, also success, knowledge, beauty, elegance, and perfection. Uh, dots usually represents stars or the tears of Mary, can also be the sun. Curls, equal protection. Spirals, the mystery of life and death, divinity and immortality. Crosses, uh, these are usually equal armed crosses, though not always. Represents the four directions, the four ages of man, the four elements, and rebirth and eternal life. Uh, agriculture, popular on traditional Pisanki, these were important to a society that depended on the fruit of the fields. Also, Krishanki had these symbols and were buried in the fields to ensure fertility. Uh, sieves, separating good from evil, uh, or sieves. Nets and baskets, um, they equal containing knowledge, motherhood, giving life, and gifts. Ladders, uh, Excuse me, searching, rising above the petty and ascending to heaven. Combs uh, mean putting things in order. Rakes equal successful harvest. Plants equal rebirth in nature, very popular symbols. Trees equal strength, renewal, creation, organic unity, growth, and eternal life. Leaves uh, equal immortality, eternal or pure love, strength, and persistence. Flowers are uh, beauty, children, uh, female principles of wisdom and elegance. Fruit uh, would mean continuity, good fellowship, strong, loyal, love, love of the divine. Sunflowers uh, mean motherhood, life, love of the divine. Wheat uh, would mean bountiful harvest. Eternity bands uh, would mean dividing elements on the eggs such as uh, meanders for harmony, motion, infinity, and immortality. Um, waves for wealth and rain, lines and ribbons for the thread of life of, or eternity, stags, um, meaning leadership, victory, joy, masculinity, horses, uh, wealth, prosperity, endurance, speed, and the motion of the sun, rams uh, meant leadership, strength, dignity, and perseverance, rams horns symbolize strong leadership, dignity, and perseverance. Um, horns meant mo mobility, wisdom, triumphs over problems, and implies manhood and leadership. Bear paws, um, a guardian spirit, bravery, wisdom, strength, and endurance, the coming of spring. Birds, all kinds are messengers of the sun and heavens, pushing away evil, fertility, fulfillment of wishes, and good harvests. Um, bird parts, eyes, feet, beaks, combs, and feathers would mean to carry the same meaning as entire birds. Roosters um, equal good fortune, masculinity coming of the dawn. Hens are fertility. Hen feet offer protection for the young and guidance. Goose feet, symbols of spirit or soul. Butterflies um, meant ascend of ascension of the soul, pleasure and frivolity of childhood. Spiders uh, equal patience, artistry, industry, healing, and good fortune. Fish equal abundance, sacrifice, and regeneration. Um, flowers equal beauty, children, principles of wisdom and elegance. Fruit equal continu continuity, good fellowship, strong and loyal love, love of the divine. Um, circles, oh, we got that. So yeah, some different things to put on your Ostara eggs for different meanings. Oh, yeah. yeah, and hopefully mm -hmm. this kind of gives a good idea for those, you know, that have been used to, to not only Ostara, but have grown up also on the history of Easter, mm -hmm. where a lot of this came from. Absolutely. But that's should to about wrap it up. I mm -hmm. hope the, you have loved our little history lesson on that. Mm -hmm. So then, we'll be catching you a little, a little later, because next month we'll be talking about the history of another Sabbath that's be coming up, Beltane. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And also continue our discussion of the different forms of definition. Okay, yes. So this will be wrapping up. This is Thomas Lionlord Putton. And Aaron Lisi. 
Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. Blessed be.